Hi there, and welcome back to this workshop about Suzanne Chiani's book La Cookbook in VCV Rack. During the first episode, we have been through the sun path and the modulation sources of the basic performance patch. We are now entering into the melodic core of the system. The duet of the sequential voltage source and the multi-arbitrary function generator. Together, they will be at the core of every melodic pattern that we will learn together. Starting by the simplest part, the sequential voltage source. This will be used as a standard 4-channel 16-step sequencer with its internal clock. We will use the programmer from NISTI and the ZZC clock as the ramp output will be useful later. The sequences programmed are carefully composed by Mrs. Chiani to be played together in any kind of combination. If you ever heard a performance from Suzanne Chiani, this would sound familiar, as the so-called basic rows of four sequences are the melodic roots for most of her improvisations. It is interesting to point out how the first note is always zero volt on the four sequences. This way a reset trigger can help to tune the oscillator if needed. It's a good trick to remember for any performances. These four sequences are not directly sent to the oscillators. They are going through the strangest module of the old system. I would need an entire series of tutorials just to explain what it is, on the assumption that I understand any of it. This module goes by the name of the Multi-Arbitrary Function Generator, or MARF, or AFG. You can refer it by any of these names. Nobody on earth will know what you are talking about, except a small handful of people who know exactly what that means. And they refer it as the 248, because of course they know every bookle module by the model number, as I hope you will at the end of this video. This module blurs the line between a sequencer an LFO, an envelope generator, a sequential switch. The use of fader and switches makes it a great performance tool. In VCV, some modules come close, but they are complex in their own way. To my knowledge, there are currently no equivalents that check all the boxes, not in VCV, nor in software or hardware for that matter. We are literally left with our own devices and we will have to build a 248 module from the scratch. For this video, I will only cover the feature that we need to perform the Bukla cookbook. It is only a small part of what the 248 can achieve. Many features will be missing. 
So as far as we are concerned, the 248 is a 16 step sequencer with two CV channels and two trigger channels. But it has two completely independent playheads. So it's actually four CV channels and four trigger channels. Each of the 16 step carries its own digital information that can be different for each playhead. Each playhead has its own clock input, manual CV address and strobe input that samples the address CV. These two playheads can read the same two channels of 16 step defined by the two rows of faders. Each step has its own information defined by all the switches. Trigger 1 and 2, stepped or glide CV, octave switches and sequence structure. Not only this information is different for every step, but also different depending on the playhead that is reading the step. And there is a twist. Any step of any channel can be switched to external. In this case, the fader becomes a selector for one of the four CV inputs, turning this sequencer into the most sophisticated 4 to 1 sequential switch ever. If we go back to the performance patch, the key concept is to take the four channels of the sequencer and send them into the external input of the 248 to recompose the four sequences at will. The two playheads are controlling the two main oscillators. Small detail that we will use in one of our patches. When the 248 is free running, the length of each step is set by the second fader. Once again, with a range per step, and a general time multiplier for each playhead. Yes, I know. How about we make it from the scratch? It will be easier. We will need to create a 16 stage sequencer with two playheads. In Visible Rack, it means a two voice polyphonic sequencer. We need it to be addressable so we can use the bug audio ADDR and its expander. We have to set the polyphony by address input and we already have our two addressable playheads. We can split the polyphonic cable to access each playhead separately and use them to control the oscillators. Let's add a quantizer in the way for a more harmonious result. The two playheads are addressing not one, but two sets of fader. So we can duplicate the sequencer to make a second channel addressed by the same polyphonic cable. This channel will be used to control the wave shape of the oscillators. As we can see on the 248, both channels has a lot of extra feature for each step. We only need the extra feature of the first set of faders to perform the cookbook. And not all of them has to be different for each step, but we must use polyphonic modules to affect both playheads. The quantize feature is already taken care of with the quantizer. We can use a slow limiter for the slope feature.
this feature is time sensitive, so we have to emulate the time multiplier for each playhead by adding an offset to the polyphonic cable. In the 248, the time can be controlled by the second set of fader, but we will almost never use this feature, so I will leave this unpatched for now. The range and offset switch can be emulated using an octave module. And now for the external mode. As we said, this feature turns the fader into a selector to output one of the four external CV. We will use this feature a lot, so we need a button to create an alternate patching. We need an addressable sequential switch with two voice of polyphony, one for each playhead. We can stay in the bug audio collection and set the polyphony by the address CV. In the external mode, the fader value address the sequencer switch. We just need to patch the poly CV output of the sequencer to address the input of the switch and the output of the switch back into the circuit. We now have a button that switches between the value of the knob and one of the four external CV controlled by this same knob. To appreciate the results, we can follow the basic performance patch and set the four rows of the sequencer to the four external CV inputs. And there we have it, an easy way to switch between the sequences. We can set a different sequence on each step of the 248 and address the step as we want. Don't forget that we have two playheads controlling two voices, so we can offset one of the playhead and have a different sequence on each voice. So this was the easy part. We still have four channels of trigger and two sequences of octave switch to take care of. And unlike the faders, the sequences can be different depending on the playhead. This is where we will add the new MindMeld ShapeMaster module to control everything. Just like the Bogodio ADDR, ShapeMaster can be used as an addressable sequencer, even with the free version, by setting the input to unipolar CV. But it cannot have two playheads on the same sequence, so we still need the bug audio around. For the first channel, I have made a staircase shape, so it can address specific steps on the bug audio sequencer and keep it in sync with the other channels. can be edited live and use it to control the octave for each step.
Same goes for the two pulses sequence that can be played in sync. The channels 5 to 8 have the same starting template. They are controlled by the second playhead and therefore they are patched on the second voice of our polyphonic circuit. We now have two completely independent playhead with their own pulses and octave switch sequence, but sharing the same bank of voltage. This bank can be replaced by external CV. The first bank control the pitch and the second bank control the wave shape. Each voice has its own octave switch and by offsetting the playheads we can play with the melody, the octave and the tone of each voice separately. And we didn't even start the sequencer yet. If we want to use the 248 as a classic sequencer we need to address the steps with a ramp sync to the tempo. We can do that with ZZC phase divider, synced to the main clock. Divided by 4 should be good to cover the 16 steps as 8 notes. We can use a sample and hold to sample the ramp with the clock for more accuracy. We can now choose the melody for every step and have a repeatable result. The playhead of set trick will still work to have polyphony. So does the octave sequence. to use the 248 as a random sequencer is by sending a signal into the external address CV input. We can patch the source of uncertainty as a random source. The sample and all module makes sure that the changes happen on the beat, which is the strobe input in the 248. We will explore this opportunity in the next episodes. So here it is, the basic performance patch. It is only a playground in which we will experiment on many specific techniques in the next episode, but there is already lots of fun to be had. Thank you for watching up to there, I will be happy to have you back in the next episode. Meanwhile, you can find many useful things in the description including the VCB patch, the link to the cookbook, some interesting lectures of Suzanne Ciani, the modular grid link to her former and current setup. See you in the next episode.